What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today I'm going to teach you how to propagate pothos plants so you end up with beautiful plants like this. Now I'm going to cover two main ways to propagate so you end up with two different types of plants. One with one huge vine and another kind with a few different vines coming out of it. So let's check out how I did it. Alright guys, so uh, I was visiting my grandmother and she had a bunch of pothos that were extremely overgrown so I took some clippings. And so I'm going to show you the two kinds I got. One I believe is a marbled queen pothos and the other one is just a kind of, I guess the regular variant where it's just green. The marbled one that's kind of variegated is actually pretty beautiful and I really do like the coloring on it. It's pretty cool and I guess the green one's alright but I did want to try two varieties. And basically I'm going to show you two of the best ways to propagate these things and why you would choose that method. That's the important thing you're going to learn today. Alright, so here's the first clipping and this one is the big one. Now, if you look very close, you'll be able to see these things on the vines. And these are called like the nodes of the pothos plant. And these are where the roots are going to come out. This is probably the most important part of pothos and pretty much most like vine cuttings of any plant. If you don't have a node, you're not going to get roots. So you have to be careful that you're not just cutting off leaves because they will not sprout into a whole new plant. All right, so this is the very tip of my cutting and I'm just going to recut it just because I think it needs to be a little fresher. It kind of sealed off, which you don't want because then it can't suck the water up. So for this cutting, this is the first method. You're just going to literally cut the one end so that way it can get water and you're going to put the whole thing in water and just let it start to root. Now, all this one is going to do is vine in one single direction. So you're going to have your base plant and then wherever the tip of it is, is where it's going to continue to grow as it roots. And it's just going to create one long skinny vine. You'll see how it contrasts compared to the next method, which I actually prefer a lot more. But it all depends on what you're going for. And you'll see what I mean in the future. So just get this thing in a container that you can at least monitor the roots in. It doesn't have to be clear, but I just like watching and it's much easier. And you're just going to add some bottled water. Make sure you're not using water with chlorine in it because it could damage the nodes and the opening where the plant was cut. All right, and this is my other cutting. Now, this is where everything gets even more important about the nodes and everything because it's going to be extremely important for how these propagate and the success of them. So if you look where each leaf connects, about a half an inch to an inch on either side of the connection of the leaf is where the node is kind of sitting and that's where you're going to get roots. So these kind of like brownish, blackish, like crusty looking things are the nodes and these once they're kind of, once they get some water on them, they're going to start to form uh, roots. And these are also kind of how these things vine up trees in nature. So these like little stubby things kind of grow into bark or nooks and crannies and kind of like swell up and gather water and resources and kind of allow it to vine up things. So for this cutting, we're actually going to cut all four leaves. And so I'm going to leave about a half an inch to an inch on either side of the node. And that's how big each cutting is going to be. Now, the reason why I'm cutting it up into fours is because that's going to basically give me four new plants. So when I eventually plant these into soil, I'm going to have four spots in which vines will come out. And this contrasts radically differently from the first method I showed you where I just took one whole cutting and tried to root it because that first cutting will only have one vine where this these four cuttings in one pot will have four vines so this is a much faster way to get kind of like a bigger bushier plant over time where the first method you'll kind of start out with a nice little plant but it will just have one vine coming from it so once you guys get those cut up then you're just going to throw them into a jar or another container where you're going to add the same kind of water that we added to the first one try not to put any chlorine in there and just make sure it's just regular water all right so here i think it's about maybe 10 days later and you can see that these nodes are already starting to turn into roots i mean this this stuff acts pretty quickly I bet you it was probably a few days before I took this footage that these roots were actually starting to form. So you can see how quickly they take to the water. The roots are pretty strange because they're kind of like, they're almost like swelled up and they look just kind of weird and they seem kind of fragile so I wouldn't poke around them too much. Honestly, I would not take them out of the water. But as time goes on, you're going to want to change your water just so it doesn't get too scuzzy. Now for these leaves, just because I wanted them to sit out of the water properly, I just put something in the middle. It's just a shot glass and this just prevented the leaves from like falling back into the jar. But you could just circumvent this entire thing by using a smaller, shorter like bowl or something. All right, so it's been about another 10 days and here's actually the much bigger cutting. You can see now, since it's been closer to 20 days for this one, since we actually made the cutting and put it in the water, this one is producing a bunch of roots. But again, 
it looks great and all, but it's only going to produce one root, which is why I don't like just taking one cutting and sticking it into the water. And I love doing the multi-cutting route. These roots are turning a little brown, which I think is okay, but it might be some sort of like kind of algae growing on them because I'm using a clear container. So you might be able to get like cleaner, less dirty roots if you use a container that sunlight can't get into. But again, it doesn't seem to affect it too much. For this one, the four cuttings, this is also the 20 days since we made the cuttings. And you can see each one is starting to sprout already. I don't know if it's because the plant is so shocked from the cuttings that it springs to life so much quicker than the other one. But these ones are already starting to make uh, new leaves, which is crazy and really fast, honestly. And again, that's why I like this method. It just seems to go so much quicker. And guys, originally, I didn't realize that this would be a better method. This was a total, totally new thing for me and a new discovery. And that's, again, why I make these videos because I don't always know everything about these plants. And a lot of times it's an experiment for myself and I just film it and document it. So that way we both, I mean, you and me can learn from this. So I think by the end of this video, you'll agree with me that the multi cuttings is just a much better process. All right, guys, another month has passed. So probably about 50 days. And honestly, I let this thing go way too long. You should not let your water get like this. But as you can see, they are pretty tolerable to just mistreatment. The plant is still doing okay. But again, I really should have uh, potted this up sooner. So I'm going to do that right now. And really, you can use any sort of like indoor potting soil. It doesn't have to be specific. I think pothos are one of those plants that are just super hardy. Um, another thing too, when you get this thing potted up, make sure you keep the soil a little wet at first because you don't want to kind of shock the roots. The last thing you want to do is stick these things in dry soil and kind of leave them that way because they are used to being in water. So you want to kind of wean them off of that really damp uh, condition. The, the cool thing about this first method where it's just one big cutting is now that I've potted it up, it already looks like a pretty nice plant, you know, like it has enough leaves in there to look like a, a fully grown pothos. So that's the one positive to this style, this method, where you only do make one cut, but it's only gonna make one vine. And I just don't think that's what most people are looking for, unless you're trying to run a vine like up over a windowsill and like along your wall. Another quick tip with pothos, if your plant starts dying and looking terrible and it's already in soil, just take a few cuttings from it and get those rooting. And it's usually like your second chance at the plant's life. Sometimes propagating can kind of save it. And here is the other pothos that I had. And you can see it's doing quite well. The roots are really starting to saturate the jar. And I think they're also ready to be planted. Almost every single one of these is growing a new shoot or a new leaf, which is awesome. And it's exactly what I want because it's going to get me that really bushy growth in the future. So I'm excited for that. And definitely I can start to see why this method is the preferred method. So I'm just gonna pot this up the same as the last one. I'm just gonna put some regular indoor potting soil in there. Honestly, the soil isn't that important with pothos. It really, the only thing soil does for the indoors is some of it's just a lot easier to not overwater. But as long as you're conscious of watering, you can get away with almost any type of soil indoors. Another thing to really uh, pay attention to when you plant these up is to be careful with their root structure because again, they only have one or two roots, so if you snap one off, you're really going to debilitate your, your propagation or your plant, your sprout, whatever you want to call it. And also, as you plant these, pay attention to where the new leaf is coming out and make sure that that is pointed up. Because you want to give that new leaf the quickest route to the surface that you can. Alright, so here we've passed the propagation phase and now they're both planted. So you can kind of get a, an idea of what I meant by the pros and cons. The first method with the, just the single cutting with many leaves, it already looks pretty nice, like I said earlier, except for those brown spots, but that's because I left it in the water way too long. I got a little lazy, so that's my bad. But when we look at the other one, it does look a little sparse and a little sad as if like it's still a baby or something. So it's not quite filling out the, the pot, but you'll see soon why it doesn't matter. All right, so we just skipped ahead another about month and a half. Again, this is why it takes so long for me to make these uh, videos because it's a process. But anyways, when we look at our first method with the single cut, you can see the vine, like I said, is growing quite well. It's got one nice long vine. It's about a foot of foot of growth and it's got plenty of leaves and it's still looking pretty good. When you see the second method now, you can see that it's not bushy quite yet. It's starting to fill out the pot, but there's just so much shorter and just sparser looking. And I think maybe that has something to, to do with like how small the leaves are because this is a slightly different cultivar of the pothos so that also may attribute to it but you can see it's sprouting and starting to do a little better 
So let's fast forward some more. All right, and here we are in January. You can see that this thing really filled out and it is really looking like one heck of a plant. I do really like Pothos because of just how easy it is to get things going. And what looked like a very sparse, kind of sad looking pot turned out to be a beautiful flowing Pothos. So as you can see, I think this is probably the preferred method and we'll cement that more, that idea more when you see this other one. So let's check out the other one quick. All right, so as you can see on this other one, most of the early like first leaves kind of died off just because they got so much older and that one single vine just kept growing and growing. It's actually extremely thick, which is crazy and the leaves are pretty darn big, but it's kind of just an unruly plant. Like what do I do with this thing? It just keeps growing and growing and you can see I hardly have the space for it and it's just kind of traveling along the top of my stuff. All right guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you liked the two methods that I showed you and I hope you've actually tried some of these. Uh, let me know in the comments which method you prefer, or which style of plant you prefer, because it is kind of subjective. Some people do want just one long vine, and it's nice to get a quick start in the pot and then have one long vine, as opposed to starting a bunch of them in the same pot and getting a nice like bushy outgrowth. So I guess it's up to your preference. So put it in the comments what you like. I'm curious how people grow their pothos or propagate it. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. As always, may your plants grow strong and healthy. See you guys later.